Now, our top story today, a budget-cutting proposal that was put forth by a White House panel has died even before it could get to Congress. Seven votes against the plan were enough to keep it from being considered by the U.S. Congress. The proposal called for a mix of tax increases and cuts in programs such as Social Security and Medicare. My next guest is part of another high-level group examining our country's debt problem. This one's sponsored by the Bipartisan Policy Center. I want to welcome former governor of Oklahoma, Frank Keating. Governor Keating, welcome to the program. Pim, thank you very much. Appreciate right. being on. So, uh, Governor Keating, it seems to be the season for proposals to somehow trim the deficit and deal with ever ballooning spending. What are your proposals and are they likely to be enacted? Well, the proposals of the Bipartisan Policy Center, which were a series of consensus proposals, all of us, Democrats, Republicans, uh, all of us out of government, but all of us citizens first. We didn't agree to everything, but we agreed that this is a package that should go forward. It wasn't, Pim, dissimilar from the package that the President's Commission proposed. For example, we proposed that we reduce the income tax rate, which could go to 39.6 the first of the year, down to 27. It'd be a 27 and a 15 percent rate. In effect, people would make decisions based upon what's best for them and their families and not what is best for the tax code. We fix Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, balance the budget except for interest on the debt by 2014 and drove down the size of the debt and eventually, hopefully, to pay it off. I think it represents the thinking of the American people. And the most important statistic, Pim, is to remember by the year 2025, we concluded, as did the President's Commission, that every cent of federal revenues, that is all tax revenues, would go to Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and interest on the debt. We would have to borrow from the Chinese the money to keep the Department of Defense alive. We'd have to borrow from the Japanese the money to keep my old agency, the FBI, afloat. That is an unacceptable scenario. Governor Keating, I mean, you report as if there is a real urgency about it. Do you believe that the Congress is going to actually take some of these proposals and act? Well, yesterday I had the opportunity to visit my friend and fellow Oklahoman, Senator Tom Coburn, and discuss the debt panel recommendations of his as well as ours. And he said, you know, I'm going to be beaten to death over this. And I said, you know something, Tom, I think the public has changed its attitude. I think the members of the public are more frightened and terrified about what this means to children and grandchildren, basically to push America down into the basement, to make us an also-run country. That is not acceptable to us, the prosperity center, the shining city on the hill. I said, on the contrary, to have all three Republicans on the president's panel vote for that report and to have Dick Durbin at the opposite extreme as a liberal Democrat vote for that report shows that there is courage among elected officials. But it's a starting point. Not all of this is going to be considered or favorably considered, but it is simply unacceptable. There is no way we can sustain this. America can't become another Greece. We have too much responsibility in the world to be that. So, Governor Keating, I mean, can you see a situation where there are incremental changes made that then give further support for further changes in the future? Not getting it all at once, but doing it step by step. Well, the easiest of all, Pim, would be Social Security. For example, our panel recommended moving to a longevity index. Remember, in 1950, the average person retired at 65 and died at 69. Today, the average person retires at 62 or wants to and will die at 80. When Otto von Bismarck in the 1870s chose 65 as the retirement age, the average German died at 48. I mean, let's be realistic. We live far longer than the longevity index of Social Security would suggest. And for very modest decreases in benefits over a much longer lifetime, beginning with younger workers, we can make the system solvent. The same thing with changing the cost of living adjustment. It isn't a difficult task, and maybe the Congress can address that and then drum up the courage to address the other issues. But for us to dramatically reduce tax rates 
and let people make decisions based upon not the tax code, but what's best for them and their families. I think that's good, sensible public policy, but it sure takes Tom Coburn type courage. And I don't know if we're going to have it, but we have to do something. Well, G Governor Keating, I mean, does it seem as though there's almost a contradiction? We spend more on Medicare and Medicaid making people healthy, but we don't raise the retirement age thinking that they're going to live longer. Well, you know, our panel did not raise the retirement age because to get Social Security solvency, Pim, we didn't need to. The president's panel, as you know, over the next number of decades did raise the retirement age. The reality is, what kind of government do people want and are they willing to pay for it? Right. Um, we wanted to drive down the debt, obviously, to keep the government spending no more than 26 percent of the private economy. The president's panel went less than that. But you can't do these things without radical surgery, and it's time for radical surgery. But All right, we're going to continue the conversation, Governor Keating. We've got time for more. Uh, Governor Keating, to talk about deficit reduction for just a moment here, the political forces in Washington, you seem to indicate, are changing the way that they're looking at this situation. They're not afraid to take what in many cases might be very unpopular stands. Well, Pim, it almost looks like the sun is rising in the West. It really is unprecedented and countercultural. But when you have a very liberal like Dick Durbin, who intends to stay in the Senate, you have a very conservative, the most conservative member of the Senate, Tom Coburn, who intends to stay in the Senate. These men have come together. They ought to get the Medal of Freedom. Judd Gregg, Senator Mike Crapo, a bunch of these people understand the seriousness of this. If they will lead the charge to fix Social Security first, follow up with the old age issues, Medicare and Medicaid, a lot of people don't see that except way down the line. I think the rest of all this stuff can fall into line, but it's going to take the president's leadership first. There's no way the Congress will do it without a lot of arm twisting and back pushing by the president. But on a bipartisan basis, it's got to be done for the purpose of America's survival. Governor Keating, does the president have the political power to make that happen? After all, the midterm elections dealt a blow to his prestige, and the Republicans are taking control of the House. Well, I think his power is diminished, but he still remains a very persuasive person. He's a very decent human being. And all of these men and women are patriots. The Congress needs to get back behind the proposals in both of these programs. Go in another direction if they wish, but don't turn the lights out until you have begun to resolve this debt deficit challenge, which is going to destroy America if we don't resolve it. Governor Keating, when you look at the Social Security issue, Many politicians have said that is off limits, that that is a program that cannot be touched. Based on your proposals, what happens to Social Security? Well, it's always been described, Pim, as the third rail, but the power is off. I think most people recognize, particularly the young, that they're not going to have traditional Social Security. So go to a longevity index to make it actuarially sound because you're living far longer. Change the cost of living uh, increase uh, uh, computation and make Social Security, fix Social Security as our panel did for the next 75 years. If you do this first, I think the average American will say, you know, they really really can do things together. Let's see what they next do. I think there is a, a lot of credibility to both programs. And I think if we can see will, the American people will support that will because they, I think, are even ahead of the curve on their own views about the need to do something about these issues right now. Governor Keating, if indeed some of these issues are tackled, won't this also help the current economy because people will believe that lawmakers are able to actually get something done? I mean, just think, Pim, if you dramatically lower the corporate income tax from 35, let's say, to 27, think about the explosive growth opportunity overseas. The competition relationship between American business here and foreign business over there, I think that we would see a real uh, increase, a lift to the economy as a result of dramatically lower tax rates. Now, there's a give back, getting rid of most exemptions, credits, and the like, but I still think if I make the decision for my family based upon what's best for me and not what's best for the tax code, I'll be more willing to invest productively as opposed to looking for shelters. Well, Governor Keating, just on the tax code, I mean, hasn't that been one of the big issues of both parties, that the tax code is just too complicated to figure out, much less be an equitable way to distribute wealth. 
Well, that's the point. And I think that most people think that if you have well-chosen lobbyists, you can get your special provision in the tax code. None of this is easy. A lot of this is complex. But I think the truth is to dramatically reduce um, the number is exemptions, deductions, and credits. In our panel, we, uh, and as, was, as did the president's, we proposed a tax credit, 15% tax credit for mortgage interest and charitable contributions. There will still be housing. There will still be the need for charitable contributions, the obligation of citizenship to help those less fortunate, and there will still be an ability to do that. This debate has got to start, and I'm just amazed, quite truthfully, that a Dick Durbin and a Tom Coburn could come together and agree that this is a, an excellent starting point. It really is quite remarkable in this very divided, partisan city. Uh, Governor Keating, uh, what are you going to be doing in Washington, D.C.? Who are your next meetings with to further this program along? Well, I've had a number of meetings with members of the House and Senate. I'll continue to have others. Uh, obviously, the bipartisan commission of which I was a member, we had governors, mayors, uh, we had cabinet secretaries of both parties. As I said, this wasn't easy. We had a lot of really aggressive debates. But I think whether you're from the left or the right, you're an American first, a patriot first, you care about the good of the country, and to make us a, an economic laughing stock over our inability to rein in debts and deficits simply is an unacceptable tomorrow for America. Now, when you take a look at the current economy, you, of course, saw the jobless numbers that were released today, Governor Keating. Uh, do you think that the government should be doing more in order to uh, help those who are looking for work, for example, extending unemployment benefits? Well, obviously, that is an issue. But obviously, beyond 99 weeks, what do you do? I mean, are you discouraging work or are you really encouraging it? But what we proposed in the Bipartisan Policy Center is a one-year FICA payroll tax holiday for both employers and employees. I mean, think about small business that didn't have to pay that 6.2 percent. The employers didn't have to pay that roughly 6.2 percent and employees. You'd have a lot more spending and I think that would be healthy. But obviously the long term right. unemployed is a real challenge for the school system. I want to thank you Among very much. Uh, former governor of Oklahoma, Frank Thanks, Keating. Ben.